فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه والتابعين لهم باحسان الى يوم الدين اما بعد ان شاء الله تعالى today this is going to be an introduction this lecture باذن الله الكريم and also tomorrow's lecture are both going to be an introduction to an upcoming series of contemporary issues that are out there. And this introduction is root causes for deviation. What are the root causes that bring about deviation? And inshallah ta'ala, this is going to be, as I said, an introduction to upcoming series. So I will be speaking about atheism and i will be speaking about bi'idhnillah al-kareem feminism i'll also be speaking about the preservation of the quran and i will also be speaking about those who say we only take the quran and we reject the sunnah of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and many more all of that is going to be upcoming series after I finish this introduction, which is called Root Causes of Deviation. My beloved brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has created the creation upon a natural disposition, fitrah. As He said in the Quran, فطرة الله التي فطر الناس عليها the natural disposition in which Allah تبارك وتعالى placed in the people and from the things that Allah تبارك وتعالى he placed in the people the natural disposition which he placed in them is محبة الحق loving the truth وإرادته and wanting it so the, from the fitrah, and I'm going to be using this term very often, the word fitrah. Fitrah means natural disposition. The basic instinct. From the fitrah of the people is muhabbatul haqqi, loving the truth. And wanting it. ولذلك الشيخ الإسلام ابن تيمية said in his Majmu' al-Fatawa, the 10th volume, page 88, والقلب خلق يحب الحق ويريده ويطلبه ابن تيمة said the heart was created wanting the truth loving the truth and seeking the truth and he also said فإن الحق محبوب في الفطرة وهو أحب إليها وأجل فيها وألد عندها من الباطل الذي لا حقيقة له فإن الفطرة لا تحب ذلك. He says the حق is loved to the فطرة the natural disposition. وهو حب إليها and it is more beloved to it. وأجل فيها and it is more honourable to it. What is it? And more sweet to it. Then the batil that has no reality to it. So the fitra loves the truth. And it, it respects the truth more. And it finds sweetness in the truth than the falsehood that has no reality to it. فَإِنَّ الْفِطْرَةَ For verily the fitra لا تحب ذلك It doesn't like falsehood. He said this in his Majmu' al-Fatawa, the 16th volume, page 338. So as we see, the nufus, the people's soul, is maftura ala ma'rifat al-haqq. 
Allah tabarak wa ta'ala created it recognizing and knowing the truth. That's why Allah said in the Quran when he was talking about Nabiullah Musa, Allah said, Rabbuna alladhi a'ta kulla shay'in khalqahu thumma hada. Our Lord is the one who gave everything to us, to his creation. And then he's the one who guided, thumma hada. He guided his creation, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said in the hadith, Al-Imam Muslim narrated in his sahih, وَالْإِثْمُ مَا حَكَ فِي صَدْرِكَ وَكَرِهْتَ أَنْ يَطَّلِعَ عَلَيْهِ النَّاسِ That evil is what regurgitates in your heart and you dislike for the people to see you do it. So what does this hadith show us? It shows us that every single body and every one of us has been given an innate ability to understand that which is evil and feel uncomfortable and not want to be seen doing it. Today, subhanAllah, a lie detector is used. And the person is asked questions when he's interrogated. And the lie detector will tell whether the person is lying or not. How are they able to find out when he's lying from when he's telling the truth? What they are getting to is the fitr of the person. The human has been created not to be inclined to evil, but to be inclined to good. Walidhalika Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah also said, Before we were talking about the nafs has been made to, I mean the fitra is something that loves the truth, inclined to the truth. صح? It's not only that. Ibn Taymiyyah goes a, further, a step further and he says that the person's fitra, what's inside your fitra is to want to know the truth from the falsehood. He says, في النفس ما يوجب ترجيح الحق على الباطل In the person's fitra, there is something that makes him want to distinguish the truth from the falsehood. Whether, the, whether it is في الاعتقادات والإرادات whether it is re uh, belief related matters or whether it's act related matters or intention related matters. And that is enough, he says. And that is enough to show that the person is innately built with this in his natural disposition. And that is what Allah also said, uh, Azza wa Jalla. Allah says in the Quran, أَفَمَنْ كَانَ عَلَىٰ بَيِّنَةٍ مِّنْ رَبِّهِ وَيَتْلُوهُ شَاهِدٌ مِّنْهُ Abdul Rahman Nasr al-Saudi in his tafsir, he said something very powerful regarding this verse, which is, أَفَمَنْ كَانَ عَلَىٰ بَيِّنَةٍ The one who is upon بَيِّنَةٍ Abdul Rahman Nasr al-Saudi said, بَيِّنَةٍ means الْوَحْيُ الَّذِي أَنزَلَهُ اللَّهِ The بَيِّنَةٍ in this verse means the revelation that was sent down from Allah. وَيَتْلُوهُ And he recites it شَاهِدٌ مِّنْهُ When there is a testimony and a witness from it. The witness here, he says, الْفِطْرَةُ الْمُسْتَقِيمَةُ وَالْعَقْلُ الصَّرِيحِ He says, Abdul Rahman Nasr Sa'diyu. So the bayina is the wahyu الَّذِي أَنزَلَهُ اللَّهِ The revelation in which Allah sent down subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the witness for it is what? الْفِطْرَةُ الْمُسْتَقِيمَةُ the steadfast and upright natural disposition. Well, aql is sarih and the rational, rational mind, I mean the rationality and the intellect that hasn't been tainted in any way, form or shape. So my beloved brothers and sisters, if the fitra remains in its natural form, it does not get tainted, then it will not request except for the truth. It will only ask and it will only seek the truth. Now pay attention to this. Brothers, The nafs, the fitrah, is inclined to the truth. It wants the truth. It gives precedence to the truth. 
it distinguishes the truth from the falsehood that we need to understand. Pay attention. This is very important that you understand this point. And then comes the truth itself. So you're already inclined to the truth. How is the truth? The truth is clear. It's something that has no taint over it. There is no veil over it that it's hidden. So the fitrah that is inclined to the truth, the fitrah that is inclined to the truth, that wants the truth, that loves the truth, that seeks the truth, it won't find it hard to find the truth itself. Because the truth has a clarity on it. It is clear. وَلِذَلِكَ That's what Mu'adh pointed out. When he said, فَإِنَّ عَلَى الْحَقِّ نُورًا On the haqq there is light. On the haqq there is light. You will be able to find it. <coughs> and this answers the question of so many people, does it not? Who say, all everybody is claiming upon, to be upon the truth. Who is right? What you need to understand is that a wallen, your fitrah, you as an individual, Allah placed in you innately to be inclined to the truth, to want the truth, to hate the wrong and the evil and the harm. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, out of mercy and His generosity and His kindness, He made the truth clear for you. So that's where the ayah comes out, comes in. أَفَمَنْ كَانَ عَلَىٰ بَيِّنَةٍ مِنْ رَبِّهِ The wahi is here, it's bayyina, it's clear. وَيَتْلُوهُ مِنْ رَبِّهِ وَيَتْلُوهُ شَاهِدٌ مِنْهُ And then the witness for it is the fitrah المستقيمة. The person's aql and the fitra, And they are easily going to find harmony. And they are easily going to coexist, both of them. And this it manifested in the act of one noble companion, Abdullah ibn Salam. Radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he was a Yahudi man, a Jewish man. And when he saw the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam migrated to Medina, Abdullah ibn, Salam, Abdullah ibn Salam, he resided in Medina. Abdullah ibn Salam, he lived in Medina. So he saw the Messenger alayhi salatu salam, and he looked at his face. And he's now going to tell us what happened. This is narrated by Imam Ahmad in his Muslim and Tirmidhi in his Sunan. He says, لَمَّا قَدِمَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ إِنْ جَفَلَ النَّاسُ عَلَيْهِ When the Prophet came to Medina, the people, they ran to the Messenger alayhi salatu salam. Abdullah ibn Salam, he said, فَكُنْتُ فِي مَنْ إِنْ جَفَلَ I was from those who ran to him. I was from those who, got, who went to him alayhi salatu salam. فَلَمَّا تَبَيَّنْتُ وَجْهَهُ He said, when it... I looked at his face, I observed him, to see his face. He said, when I looked at his face and I clarified his face, I came to realize that his face was not the face of a liar. So look what's happening here. The fitrah is now seeing the truth right in front of it. From the first things I heard him say was what? Ya ayyuhal nas. أَفْشُ السَّلَامِ وَأَطْعِمُ الطَّعَامِ وَصِلُوا الْأَرْحَامِ وَصَلُّوا بِاللَّيْلِ وَالنَّاسُ نِيَامِ تَدْخُلُوا الْجَنَّةَ بِالسَّلَامِ O oh people, spread the greeting. Feed the ones in need. Keep the ties of kinship. Pray at night when the people are sleeping. You will enter Jannah in peace. That's the first thing which he had. So look at... Look at Abdullah ibn Salam, his action. The fitrah that wanted the truth, that is inclined to the truth, or saw the truth right in front of it. And the messenger alayhi salatu salam was what? The revelation was coming down on him. His statements that were coming out of his mouth, alayhi salatu salam was what? Wahyun, a revelation from who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Abu Muhammad ibn Hazm al-Zahiri rahimahullah, he has a book called uh, Mudawat al-Nufus. It's a book that talks about manners and its etiquettes that a student of knowledge and a Muslim needs to come with. And look what he says in that. He says, أَفْضَلُ نِعَمِ اللَّهِ عَلَى الْعَبْدِ From the greatest blessings of Allah upon a slave is أَنْ يُطَبِّعَهُ عَلَى الْعَدْلِ وَحُبِّهِ وَعَلَى الْحَقِّ وَإِيثَارِهِ is that Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, He builds in you innately justice. 
and to love it. وَعَلَى الْحَقِّ and the truth and giving it precedence وَإِثَارِهِ over everything else. A statement more detailed. A statement more detailed than the statement of Abu Muhammad ibn Hazm. And more in depth was said by none other than the noble Imam Ibn al Qayyim al Jawziyya rahimahullah. Ibn al Qayyim said, فَإِنَّ كَمَالَ الْإِنسَانِ The completeness of a person, مَدَارُهُ عَلَىٰ أَصْلَيْنِ revolves around two fundamental points. The first one is, مَعْرِفَةِ الْحَقِّ مِنَ الْبَاطِلِ Recognizing the truth from the falsehood. وَإِثَارُهُ عَلَيْهِ And giving precedence to the truth over the falsehood. Those are the two. The first one is what? مَعْرِفَةِ الْحَقِّ Recognizing the truth from the falsehood. The second one is, وَإِثَارُهُ عَلَيْهِ And giving it precedence over... And give him precedence, the truth to, over the falsehood. So once you recognize one from the other, it doesn't just become mere knowledge and mere understanding comprehension. Rather, it turns into a manifestation of actually striving to the truth over the falsehood. Then he goes on to say, pay attention. So those are the two foundations, right? Which the completeness of a person is connected to. Look what he says after that. وَمَا تَفَاوَتَ مَنَازُلُ الْخَلْقِ the people stations does not differ. Many people are not of different levels and different positions. In Allah, in the eyes of Allah, Taala, in dunya, in this world, wal akhirati, and the day of judgment, illa biqadri tafawuti manazilin fi hadain al amrain, except their differences in the two aforementioned points. The only reason why you would find a person entering Jannah, firdaus al a'la. Are you there, brothers? And another person may be entering a lower level or another one entering a lower level in Jannah is because these two foundations were not present fully and completely in this person. Pay attention to this. He goes on to say, And they are the two things. And they are the two things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has praised his prophets, prophets for having. These two fundamental points, these two foundations, is what Allah praised His prophets for. Allah says in the Quran, "Wadkur ibadana Ibrahim wa Ishaq wa Yaqub ul al-Aidi wa al-Absar." Allah says to the Messenger, "Wadkur mention ibadana our slaves, who Ibrahim wa Ishaq wa Yaqub." These three noble prophets, Ibrahim, Ishaq, and Yaqub, mention them. Allah then says, "Ul al-Aidi and al-Absar." Ibn al-Qayyim says, فَالْأَيْدِ أَيْدِ means what? الْقَوِيُّ فِي تَنْفِيدِ الْحَقِّ It's the one who is strong in executing the truth. So again, you see, he manifests on his limbs. He's able to execute the truth. وَالْأَبْصَار means what? He goes, وَالْأَبْصَار الْبَصَائِرُ فِي الدِّينِ Insight of the religion. Again, distinguishing the truth from the falsehood he means. فَوَصَفَهُمْ Allah described these three noble prophets بِكَمَالِ إِدْرَاكِ الْحَقِّ with having complete perception of the truth وَكَمَالِ تَنْفِيذِهِ and the complete ability of executing the truth. So that, my beloved brothers and sisters, gives us a true understanding that the truth is not something that is far-fetched. It's something Allah placed in you subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's something that is in your heart. And it is also something Allah has clarified for you when it comes to the details matters pertaining to it. Now that we've understood that, there are factors, there are root causes that makes the person lose the ability to approach the truth. And make them become deviated. There are factors, there are root causes that would make an individual sway away from the truth and fall into deviation and misconceptions and misguidance. And all of these root causes revolve around three. Three are the main headings. The first one is Su'ul Qasd. 
the person has an evil motive, an evil intention, a corrupt motive. The second one is al jahlu ignorance. The second one is al jahlu ignorance. And the third one is al dhulm oppression and transgression. Those three are, they are the uh, summary and the main points and headings in which all of the points that I'm going to mention go back to. But when we go into details, we can expand on more. So there's so much that's going to come under Su'ul Qasdi. There is so much that comes under Al-Jahl. And there is so much that fall under Dhulm. It comes in different forms. But these are the khulasa of what? Of why a person will be swayed away from the truth. And why a person would what? Fall into misguidance. So the first root cause for deviation is Al-Jahl ignorance. The first one is al jahlu ignorance. As I said before, brothers and sisters, al haq wadhun bayinun. The haq is true and it's clear, and it's easy. Allah says in the Quran, "Walaqad yassarna al Quran li dhikri fahal min mudakir." Allah says we have made the Quran easy. And what Allah made easy, my beloved brothers and sisters, is its wording. Rereading the Quran and pronouncing the Quran and articulating the Quran is something Allah has made easy subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also Allah wa ta'ala made easy fahmu ma'nah to understand the meaning of the Quran. Understanding the Quran is something Allah has made it easy for the people. So this shows us that the truth is easy and it's simple. Also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sorry, also the messenger also, the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam, told us that al halal bayinun that the halal is clear. Wal haram bayinun and the haram is what? It is clear. Wa baynahuma and between them is umurun mushtabihat. Matters which are ambiguous, unclear. And the consensus of the ulama is mun'aqidun ala had al asli. This foundation that I mentioned, which is that the haq is clear. Are you there? And that is clear. It's something that is ijma' by consensus. I don't want to. I didn't want to transmit ijma' because so many people say, "Well, the haq is not clear like that. Nothing is black and white." But this is ijma' mun'aqidun ala had al asli. This matter is consensus that the haq is clear. So now that we've understood that, my beloved brothers and sisters, the ones who propagate the falsehood and who push the falsehood, and who spread falsehood, is who, based on our first root cause, is that مَنْ لَا عِلْمَ عِنْدَهُ وَلَا مَعْرِفَةً It's somebody who has no knowledge and no understanding and comprehension. Who doesn't have, who's not given any consideration. لَا اَتِنَاءَ لَهُ بِنُصُوصِ الْكِتَابِ وَالسُنَّةِ وَأَقْوَالِ الصَّحَابَةِ وَالتَّابِعِينَ A person, and an individual who hasn't given any form of consideration, to the textual evidences, the kitab, the sunnah, and the statement of the sahabas and the tabi'in. He has no, he's not given any consideration to that. Those are the type of people you tend to find who spread, who propagate, who push falsehood. If you observe those people and you look at them, you will come to know is people who don't have ilm of the Quran and the sunnah, the aqwal and the ta- statements of the sahabas and the tabi'in. ولذلك ابن القيم transmitted in his كتاب علام الوقعين the first volume page 44 the statement of Imam Ahmed رحمه الله he says إنما جاء خلاف من خالف لقلة معرفة بما جاء عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم he says that Imam Ahmed saying this Imam أهل السنة والجماعة Imam Ahmed said the dispute and argument of those who have disputed an argument have occurred because of what? لِقِلَّةِ مَعْرِفَتِهِمْ Because they had little understanding of what? بِمَا جَاءَ عَنِ النَّبِي They had little knowledge and understanding of that which the messenger came with. Ya ikhwa, The people of ignorance and misguidance are what? They are ignorant of the nusus. Look at them. وَلِذَارِكَ What did he say? 
the Salaf used to say, Ahlul Bid'ah, A'da'u Sunan. The innovators are the enemies of the textual evidences. That's what they hate the most. Um, Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah also said, Falhaqu ya'rifuhu kulla ahad. Ibn Taymiyyah says, The truth, everybody knows it, and everyone can recognize it. فَإِنَّ الْحَقَّ الَّذِي بَعَثَ اللَّهُ بِهِ الرُّسُلِ Because the truth which Allah has sent down the messengers with لا يشتبه بغيره على العارف It does not mix up for the person who knows. The حق Let me take back his statement. Let me explain his statement again. He says فَالْحَقُّ يَعْرِفُ كُلُّ أَحَدٍ The truth, everybody knows it. فَإِنَّ الْحَقَّ الَّذِي بَعَثَ اللَّهُ بِهِ الرُّسُلِ because the truth in which Allah sent the messengers with, لا يشتبه بغير على العارف. The one who knows, it doesn't mix up with him for anything else. كما لا يشتبه الذهب الخالص بالمغشوش على الناقد. Just like the gold that has, it's not pure gold. If you bring it to a, a man who sells gold, who knows gold, you can't fool him. He will know that this is a, this is fake. This is uh, fake gold. The one who knows, who has knowledge, when you come up with things, you can't mix it up for him. Ibn Taymiyyah says this in his what? Majmu' al-Fatawa, the 27th volume, page 315 to 316. So why is it that the batil can be mixed up for somebody? How can batil be mixed up with the truth for somebody? Are you with me, brothers? How? It can when you don't have knowledge. When you don't have knowledge of the religion and you don't have understanding, what happens, my beloved brothers and sisters? You are the, your enemy and the individual is able to confuse you, mix things up for you because you have no understanding. Ibn al-Qayyim says in his book, Hidayatul Hayara fi Ajwibatil Yahudi wal Nasara, the 18th volume, sorry, the 18th page, page 18. Page 18. Ibn al-Qayyim says, وَالْأَسْبَابُ الْمَانِعَةِ مِنْ قَبُولِ الْحَقِّ كَثِيرٌ جِدَّا Sorry. وَالْأَسْبَابُ الْمَانِعَةُ مِنْ قَبُولِ الْحَقِّ كَثِيرَةٌ جِدَّا Ibn al-Qayyim says, The things, I mean the reasons, that prevent a person from accepting the truth are vast and large in amount. So there are many things that make a person not want to accept the truth. Are you with me? فَمِنْهَا But from them is what? الْجَهْلُ Ignorance. بِهِ Ignorance of it. Ignorance of it is what? Is a reason of refusing to accept the truth when it's presented to you. Pay attention. He goes on saying, وَهَذَا السَّبَبُ هُوَ الْغَالِبُ عَلَىٰ أَكْثَرِ النُّفُوسِ And he goes on to saying, And this Reason is what the majority of the people are in. Then he goes on to say, فَإِنَّ مَنْ جَهِلَ شَيْئًا عَدَهِ Because anybody who has hate towards something, he shows it enmity. وَعَادَ أَهْلَهُ And he also shows enmity to the people who are in it, or the people who are carrying that knowledge. He doesn't like them. Are you with me? And it brings me back to the statement of Ali ibn Abi Talib. He says, Ali ibn Abi Talib said, وَقِيمَةُ الْمَرْءِ مَا يُحْسِنُ وَالْجَاهِلُونَ لِأَهْلِ الْعِلْمِ أَعْدَاءُ Ali ibn Abi Talib said, the honor of a person is connected to that which they can perfect. وَالْجَاهِلُونَ لِأَهْلِ الْعِلْمِ أَعْدَاءُ And the people of ignorance are enemies of the people of knowledge. They hate the people of knowledge the most. You know why? Because that's where they are unable to spread their misguidance. They're going to be broken with evidence, right? That's why the Rafi that they hate Abu Huraira. Because Abu Huraira brought narrations that broke their backs. And that is the reality of every misguided person. Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah he has an explanation on the hadith, لا يزني الزاني حين يزني وهو مؤمن. 
when he was explaining it, page 35, in his explanation, they've published it alone by itself. Page 35, the sharh of this hadith, he says the following. It's also present in his Majmu' al-Fatawa. He says, وَلَا تَجِدُ أَحَدًا وَقْعَ فِي بِدْعَةٍ You will never find a person who fell into innovation إِلَّا لِنَقْصِ اتِّبَاعِهِ لِلسُنَّةِ عِلْمًا وَعَمَلًا Except deficiency in following the sunnah in knowledge and implementation. You will not find a person who had fallen into innovation except the reason why he fell into innovation is because of deficiency in his knowledge and also in his implementation. وَإِلَّا أَكْسَبْتْ فَمَنْ كَانَ بِهَا عَالِمًا Because if he was a person who has knowledge of it, وَلَهَا مُتَّبِعًا And one who was following the sunnah, لَمْ يَكُنْ عِنْدَهُ دَعِنْ إِلَى الْبِدْعَةِ فَإِنَّ الْبِدْعَةِ يَقَعُ فِيهَا الْجُهَالُ بِالسُنَّةِ Then there would be nothing calling him to innovation. For verily, innovation, the only ones who fall into it are who? الْجُهَالُ بِالسُنَّةِ People who are ignorant of the sunnah. So this jahal, brothers, and sisters who are listening, it is a root cause of why a person will deviate from the truth. Why a person will fall into misguided. Now my beloved brothers and sisters, a point I have to mention, which is what? Many people will say, and they use the excuse of ignorance for an individual. They will say, Fulan, Ya Akhi, you can't blame him. He's ignorant. He doesn't know. He doesn't understand. He's just a muqallid. He's blind follower. So he's ignorant. Is this ignorant an excuse? Let's look at what the ulama said regarding this particular matter. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah alayhi rahmatullahi he says, وَيَلْحَقُ الذَّمُّ مَنْ تَبَيَّنَ لَهُ الْحَقِّ فَتَرَكَهُ Ibn Taymiyyah says, belittlement, uh, scolding, Rebuking is attached to man tabayyana lahu al-haqq, the person who the truth becomes clear to him, fatarakahu and leaves it. Is that it? Oh, or man qassara fi talabi, or the person who becomes short in looking for what? The truth. Hatta lam yatabayyana lahu until it never became clear to him. So, in other words, he came short, he didn't go out of his way. To find out, basically what he did was, he came with tafrid fi raf'il jahli an nafsi. He came short in uplifting ignorance from himself, basically. Ibn Taymiyyah says, أَوْ مَنْ قَصَّرَ فِي طَلَبِي حَتَّى لَمْ يَتَبَيَّنْ لَهُ He's saying that the rebuke and the scolding falls onto it also who? The one who came short in looking for the truth until it never became clear to him. Or he turned away from looking for it. Why? Lihawan because of a desire. Or because of laziness. Or anything like that. Is he excused? Is he said that he's ignorant? The truth has become clear to you. Then you left the truth that was brought to you. Pay attention to that. 